Uh, okay, ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats and let's welcome our next speakers for today, Tomasz Hoza and Petr Hraček. Yeah, sure. Hi, folks. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Tomasz. And together with my colleague Peter, I would like to tell you something about Rebase Helper and Upstream Release Monitoring. Just out of curiosity, how many of you maintain some package? Yeah. Great. We too. So, uh, <laughs> all right, it's not working. Ah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, I would like to give you a high-level overview of what upstream release monitoring in Fedora is. Uh, talk about Rebase Helper if you are not really familiar with this tool. It's been here uh, around for some time, but I'm not sure how used it is. Uh, and then we will talk about uh, integration of Rebase Helper into upstream release monitoring service workflow, and we'll show you some examples. Peter has some demo, so hopefully it will work, and we'll summarize everything in the end. So what's upstream release monitoring service? Uh, it's a service developed by Fedora infrastructure engineers. It's not by us. We are just like users. And uh, it's a service to uh, help uh, package maintainers to keep track of uh, latest upstream versions. When upstream releases a new version, it, will, it can help you to, like it can notify you that there is a new version. So it consists of basically, as Ralph said before, it's microservice. Uh, oriented, or hard to call it. Uh, it consists of basically two components that are interesting from our point of view, and they communicate over Fedora message bus. So the first uh, component is Anitia. It's uh, like the, it has a nice front end where you can add a new project, uh, uh, add the URL where the project sources are placed, and it uh, basically, it then, uh, uh, checks all those like uh, latest versions of software and sends out the message. Then there's the new hotness that does some magic and uh, like uh, acts upon messages from Anitya. So let's have a closer look. We have a nice uh, picture where you can see, okay, 
So, so this whole thing is the, the service. And as I said, in an ATI, you, you can add a new project, uh, provide the URL where the sources are, then choose uh, basically what's the type of uh, service where the project is hosted. So it's, if it's uh, GitHub or SourceForge or that kind of stuff. So, so Anitia knows uh, how to find out if there is a new version. And what it does, it reg regularly checks the upstream projects if uh, there is a new version. If there is a new version, it basically uh, sends a message on mes Fedora message bus, and there is the new hotness, which uh, acts up upon such messages. So I think as the first thing, it uh, tries to find out is there is existing bugzilla for, for the component, if it's open, and if it's, if it's not, it will uh, create a new bugzilla for you for the component in Fedora, informing you that uh, there is a new version, upstream version, and you should, you, you and that you should update the version in Rawhide. So uh, after that, it tries to uh, trigger, it triggers a new uh, uh, package rebuild using the latest sources in, in Koji. But uh, this can fail from like different reasons. Basically, imagine you have a package where you have downstream patches and those uh, don't apply on the latest sources version, then the build will fail. Also, if, if your files list in a spec file, is like really strict and you don't uh, use wildcards and there is like sonam bump or new binary appeared or disappeared, uh, the build will fail. So when the new hotness uh, uh, triggers the scratch build or rebuild of the new version, it uh, uh, keeps track of the task ID and waits basically for, for message from Koji that the build finished, either, uh, either successfully or unsuccessfully. In the end, it will add the logs and comments into the existing Bugzilla, informing you that, hey, this is the link to the scratch build, and here are the, some logs, build logs, and that kind of stuff. So this is an example of uh, how the bug report from upstream release monitoring looks like. I'm sure if you maintain a package, you already seen this. So what's Rebase Helper? Rebase Helper, it's a nice project. We started almost two years ago. It got started uh, as part of the Red Hack week we had. Uh, basically, it was a week where we could hack the whole week on s some new cool ideas and forget about our regular responsibilities. So Rebase Helper was one of the ideas to help maintainers to automate and help them with this like boring rebasing of uh, components in Fedora. So it does a lot of magic and things you should do, and maybe not everyone does that. So it can download the new sources for you when you run it in, in the Fedora disk git of the component, basically in the repository of the component. After it downloads the sources, it uh, tries to rebase the downstream patches you have for the package on top of the latest version of, soft, of the sources. It uses git rebase for this purpose. So, if you had, uh, if you have uh, something like a merge tool, uh, merge tool you use for resolving the conflicts uh, with Git, rebase helper will use whatever you use with Git uh, every time you use use it. So, after it uh, goes through the process of rebasing the patches with you. Uh, it will try to rebuild the old version of RPMs and the new version of RPMs. So there are a couple of uh, like uh, three, three different ways how, how it can rebuild the RPMs, uh, either locally or remotely, locally using mock or RPM build or remotely using fed package. Uh, after the binary RPMs are built, uh, it will download them, or if these were built locally, it will just have it already, and uh, it will run different uh, checks on them. Uh, we support three uh, different uh, tools that are run basically all the time, all three of them, because they pro produce different uh, kinds of output. Uh, we support package diff, RPM diff, and ABI package diff. Basically, the idea is that in the to help you notice, for example, 
uh, surname bumps and new uh, like uh, new files, binaries, uh, header files disappearing and appearing in the new version. Uh, Rebase Helper will uh, compare those two sets of binary RPMs and provide you some logs and data so you know you are not surprised and you don't surprise the consumers of your package on the next update. So now I would like to give a floor to Peter as he will continue with the new stuff we implemented in uh, Rebase Helper and we'll describe the integration more deeply. Yep, thanks Thomas. Well, on the last DevConf, we introduced the Rebase Helper to all Fedora community. As Tomáš said, it is a really awesome project, definitely, like upstream release monitoring service. It helps your packages, like it tracks everything. Well, what he did la since last year. First of all, we implemented f uh, feature called non-interactive mode. What does it mean? It means that if you have a package like PostgreSQL or Systemd, the compilation and the rest of the stuff takes a pretty long time. One hour, two hour, days? I guess not. Uh, and we don't want to buffer the developer, maintainer, user, I guess not. And we implement it so that if you enter to the command line, Rebase Apple still does not have a GUI, uh, then user is not uh, interrupted. Or you cannot take care about the, f uh, user cannot take care about the uh, stuff like, okay, this patch is not working. And the idea was, first of all, to implement Rebase Helper to upstream monitoring, or, um, upstream release monitoring service. It was an idea, but we did it. Uh, what was changed next was that at the beginning we use a patch command together with melt. And after some time we realized that patch is not useful. Many packages use different mechanisms, and we seen that, okay, we are using a git. Why we should not use the git rebase command? It works for us well and better than patch. And we did it. Uh, and what we implemented next? We have a mock, we have a, a RPM build. This is a local. We need to implement something for um, like remote. And we have a fat PKG. We implement it. And the last time, last new issue was we have to find the changes in RPMs, like Sunem bumps, as really great Tomar said, uh, headers. And, but we would like to know why Sunem bump was bumped, and we have to uh, we have to inform the community. Hey, lib PNG was changed. Take care about it and inform. And ABPKGDiv does it. And I uh, had a several communication with Doji. He's a clever smart guy about uh, comparing the ABA, uh, ABAP checks, and he told me, oh, hey, we should improve it. He provides the new version, he provided the new version, and we include it in the rebase offer. Well, we have uh, all stuff. What is next? Upstream release monitoring service is a good place to inform the user via Bugzilla, hey, you have this change, header, and so on. And I guess that one month ago, we released Rebase Helper 0.0, like here, which introduced the system for upstream release monitoring service, but it is only for the Rebase Helper. We have to include it in, into the upstream release monitoring. And I, don't know, I did not know who contact. Finally, I found the Ralph Bean, He's the right person who helped me with a lot of stuff. Well, and before I will show you what we did. Rebase helper can rebase the downstream patches, can show you, okay, this patches does not work on the new upstreams. Rebase helper can inform you about surname bumps, and we were asking, hey, we have an upstream release monitoring service, do it. 
end. We did it. It is a nice picture from Tomasz. It's great. Well, this is only the new hotness. What it does? It receives from the wild fat message the message that, okay, I am here. I am a new upstream and I would like to build, but okay, this is the same stuff. And we say, okay, we have a rebase alpha and we provide the information to them. Well, rebase alpha calls, is called, and we rebase alpha download sources, rebase them if it's possible, of course, and create a source RPMs, old and new. And at the end, we send via FAT package, as I uh, said before, okay, here is. And we triggered uh, both Koji IDs. And okay, we have final step, we have a Koji, we have a source RPMs, we have a, um, and we should wait what happened. After Koji finished the source RPM task, we does not care if there is a failed start state, success state, or cancelled state, we does not care now. And fat messages said or sent to the, uh, the new hotness, okay, I am finished. Okay, we will care. In the old version, we attach only the build logs. Upstream is good, but we need to inform that via Bugzilla. What's happened? And therefore, rebase helper catch old and new triggers, oh, um, sorry, old and new triggers which regards to the Koji, and download RPMs, download the build logs, and run several checks, which we in, uh, implemented. Not only the one, we need the both, all stuff. Because each tool provides different informations. And at the end, if it was success, then we add to the, bug, we are, we add to the Bugzilla logs, results, and other stuff. Is it still realistic? Yes. Well, a uh, month ago I spent a lot of time to integrate it and to redid it. And I will show you how it looks like before. Here. You can see who see the, this screen from Bugzilla. New available software. Systemd, yes, cool. And it fails from the reason, we don't know why. And somebody completed the script build. Okay, but are you ready? You can see that, sorry, it's my name because I am not running under upstream monitoring service. It is my tempor temporary machine. We find, okay, over the rebase helper, we check that, okay, patches were not touched or there are no patches. This is a bug create the uh, issue to the rebase helper. We include, or rebase helper includes the root log from Koji. Of course, new, only the new sources. Build log. And what is important for you? Adds to the Bugzilla PKG diff. And at the end, of course, for us, attach the rebase helper debug log. We need them. We need to be sure, okay, it fails, but from which reason? And I hope, I guess, that if this will be, or it will be released officially soon, you will send us the issues. Hey, this is not working totally. Rebase upper should be redesigned, should be co patched or whatever you want, and we have to do it. And we will do it. Well, we have a demo. I guess that it will work. Where is my screen? No. <laughs> I cannot show, ah, I see. Sorry, sorry. No, on the, ah, here it is. Come on, yeah, I see. This is a bit schizophrenic, I don't know where I have a screen. Yeah, well, this is the real uh, 
machine where is implemented the feature Rebase Helper. It is not officially released because there are still some, uh, 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 there are still some bugs. Well, we will start a build. Yeah. This is the, after a lot of discussion, and thank you, Ralph, for fixing my problems. It helps me. And now I can, <laughs> it was an English mistake, I know. Uh, this message ID is, I guess, a message ID from Node.js, Koniaze, or whatever, we, um, how it's called, the component. And it sends to the fed message um, information about the new release. It is somehow hacked, but it will work. Okay, I will send to the Anatia message. Okay, I sent, and what's happened? You can see that Anatia received the message. Okay, there is a, there, uh, here is a new upstream release. It calls repo query, it took a time, it takes a time, and we will wait. Yeah, and what will happen now? Uh, Anatia, or the new hotness, will call Rebase Helper and initiate the scratch build. After a time, uh, the new hotness will receive message, okay, all is succeed, and the states are, if old scratch build fails, then we don't care. It should not happen, because let's imagine that you have an old Fedora package and it is not buildable, and Rebase Helper does not care about it. It's not my job. It's your maintainer job. If it's canceled, then of course, I don't have care why you canceled the scratch build. Maybe the Koji was done. But what in case that old scratch build finished successfully and new uh, scratch build, huh, how it failed, succeed, let's say. Then we compare all RPMs against old and against the new. But what in case that uh, new scratch build failed? Shall we? inform, yes, of course, because either patches were not success. No, this is a totally, because source RPM will not be generated. And it failed, why? What happened? Build was not correct, of course, it can be. And we should inform the maintainer, hey, your package is not buildable. From the reason, I don't know, patches not, files are missing, uh, license is missing, or you are totally wrong. Or, at the end, the scratch build was canceled. And of course, Rebase Apple does not care. Okay, from any, from any reason, you uh, canceled the scratch build. Okay, it seems that it took a time. It takes a time. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well. Uh, yeah, of course. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We will finish and we will see. Yes. Yeah, so, so also we can use this time for questions if you have any. Uh, so I'll just summarize right. if I can, and then we can jump to questions. So I just want to summarize that what upstream release monitoring is. It just it takes a, do, does a nice job by, uh, by checking upstream. Uh, upstream projects for the new releases and notifies uh, the Fedora maintainers. And it can be not only Fedora. Uh, I think uh, Anitia supports also other distributions, but uh, 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 at this time, I think only Fedora is implemented. Maybe there's something more. Maybe no. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, Rebase Helper is uh, another great tool that uh, tries to. Um, ease the pain of maintainer when doing rebases of component by automating as much as possible and running some additional checks on the RPM so you are not surprised and you don't surprise users of your uh, component. So Rebase Helper basically saves time uh, by automating all those boring tasks you have to do again and again and again when new 
version is released. And also, uh, the upstream release monitoring uh, is not uh, auto doing all the tasks that Rebase Helper is doing that can uh, help that can help the new version of RPMs to be built successfully and uh, be used. So, so uh, I, on my components, for example, I uh, regularly see that the scratch builds uh, fired up by uh, upstream release monitoring fail because uh, those include quite a few downstream patches and these don't apply on the new sources. So uh, using rebase helper to automatically rebase patches and find out any difficulties uh, is, uh, it feels like a natural way to integrate it, uh, as a natural thing to integrate it into upstream release monitoring service. So I think now we can jump to questions. So. That's true. The old one is the current uh, uh, latest version that's available in Fedora, and the new one is basically version that's not yet in Fedora, but we, we, we basically download the new sources, we change the version in spec file uh, of the component, and basically we, we produce a new source RPM with a new version but it's just temporary thing and we call this uh, source RPM and the produced binary RPMs as the new version, basically, of RPMs or new set. Actually, we don't keep track of, uh, we, we don't care what's uh, built in Koji as the scratch build. We, we don't keep track of it uh, from the point of view of rebase helper. We just, like, w whatever, when you run a rebase helper, there is the current version, and you want to rebase the component to a new version. So, so the new version is like what we are trying to build with the new s sources. We are not like reusing those scratch builds for anything, or it's just a way how to produce binary RPM. So we have something to compare with the old RPMs. It's not like I will send. Uh, okay. And I would like to also uh, note uh, yeah, I see. Uh, that uh, when you are doing builds locally, which we cannot do with uh, upstream release monitoring service, when you do builds locally, uh, Rebase Helper can actually try to build the new RPMs, and it can then, if the build fails, it will try to inspect the locks before, because we can do the rebasing of downstream patches, but it's hard to find out before you build RPMs if there is like new binary or if there is like sonam bump or something like that. So if you run rebase helper locally and do the build locally, uh, we will analyze also the build log and we'll try to find out if there is like new binary and the build failed when RPMs were composed. So we'll try to add uh, the new file into the file section and then rebuild it again. So we'll do this in the loop after a couple of times we may decide that there is go nowhere. So, but that's not used uh, with upstream release monitoring. Well, uh, sorry, I will show you. Uh, here you can see that uh, as we started, it seems that there is a magic environment, it works, I don't know why. Uh, here is that uh, Rebase Helper was started from the new upstream release monitoring, or uh, upstream, uh, new upstream release. He found the bug in partner bugzilla, and he cloned the repo from Fedora, download the sources, he made the magic via git rebase, and the rebase developer finally built source RPM. I like that program, Tmax. And this, these are the debug information from us, some logs and other stuff. Here you can see patches were not touched, and they are reported to the bugzilla, and after a time, Again, you can see that there is a, some status from Koji, the task were, were closed from Koji, and at the end, you see that we downloaded the, all the debug informations, logs and other stuff, getting RPMs, 
And at the end, we are comparing the packages using RPM diff, and it fails from another reason. I don't know why, I have to check. Yeah. Okay, I am going back. Well, so I, I think we had one question. Yeah, so uh, I'm not sure if I'm missing something. So it will rebase and do a uh, try fill with the hypothetical we were before you. But after that, you still have, like as a package maintainer, you still have to do the manual work of updating the spec file, entering the NT and EP bitrate order. Yeah. Uh. At the first presentation, David Walsh sent this, like this. Cool. Uh, <laughs> uh, really good point. We, f we f think about it, and of course, we can automate it so that if all will success, then we can directly uh, call git push. Git build, fetch package build, and so on. But we, we no, Rebase helper makes some changes in spec file. The Rebase helper comments stuff there, and if the patches are somehow modified so that they are applied to the new sources, then they are included, uh, the patch is included in the disk git and push to the Fedora repositories, and this, uh, this aim should not be automated because we, the rebase helper will include uh, some garbage, and this is not the proper way. Of course, maintainer has the, um, how to say, the final decision, okay, this is a, Fine, fi final state, this is an okay state, the RPM uh, is fine, and we can officially build. Rebase helper is only a tool, not the user. And he cannot, or it cannot um, do all automated tasks. It can, but this is a robot. Uh, <laughs> yeah, sure. I would like just to rephrase. Yeah. Uh, but uh, we, we have all these data. So we have the rebased uh, spec file, we have uh, rebased patches and that kind of stuff. So, so there should be no problem to make a new repo somewhere uh, with it, or new branch, or basically create a tarball including all those files, and then you can just uh, like. Uh, okay, yeah, but uh, as Peter said, uh, there is like uh, maybe plan, but we didn't even start yet uh, to provide you something like uh, now. If you just inspect the changes, and if you are okay with it, just click, and you can automatically we can commit uh, to the this git and create like regular build for you. But yeah. uh, definitely users should inspect this before we, we should not do this, uh, you know. We have an issue, issue for that on our GitHub, really. We would like to implement it. But I am really scared about it. You are totally, yeah, you are right. <laughs> I think okay. Ralph had a question before. Mike.
Could you please file an uh, issue for it, for this Git pool? It would be f only for tracking purpose, and we will see. Yeah, but, but the idea of it uh, pull request sounds like great. Yeah. 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 Any other question? We have nice At the end, here. I would like to show uh, some references. We have a uh, rebase helper uh, documents. Here is a GitHub. It, is o it was already posted as some uh, blog about LiveJournal, on uh, LiveJournal, some articles. And soon, we will have an Apple package, not over the copper. And I hope that during the month, not later on, we will have a final state, and you will receive the hour modification with all stuff like logs, scratch build fails, and other. Yeah. You will receive more emails from Bugzilla. Thank you. I think we have still like five minutes or maybe four questions. So if you have more questions, yeah, go on. Yeah, I know about 50 package maintainers. Uh, question is really great. And I have a discussion with Python uh, maintainer. You know Slavek Kabada, I guess. And he told me a really great idea. It does not matter if Rebase Helper properly merge all, but with the non-interactive mode, if Rebase Helper tell me, well, this free patches fails, this is important for me. I, let's say that package has a, like Grim, has a, I don't know how many, 100 patches. And if Rebase Helper tells you, hey, these three are wrong, that it save your time. And this is the good, po good point for you. There are not managers, unfortunately, but you know, our work is about the time and money. And let's say that we have uh, 500 packages, or sorry, 500 maintainers, and you save at least and a half. Then you save a red hat money. But ma there is no any manager, I don't know why. Yeah. The, the idea is you should be able to, tre uh, to run rebase helper in a window in non-interactive mode or in interactive mode uh, and just keep it running, do your other stuff. After f half an hour, you just open that window and you see if there's something failed, you need to resolve and you know, like there are tasks, those should be for sure automated. RDO package or RDO how it's called? Package. Yeah. Did we, we started Rebase Helper before they started their thing, so. And I'm not sure, sure nobody like called us or. No, no, no. Currently, no, nowadays, no, but we can share, of course. Basically, we realized they did something like that after <laughs> they already did it. Or yeah. like, uh, I think we are not uh, looking for other projects like that. We didn't see anything for, for RPMs and Fedora, so we created one, and I, I guess they did the same thing. But I think it, it still has to be pretty small with like all the open stuff you just said, and you know, but at this point, it doesn't basically mean it. Maybe that you would like to make it more general. Maybe that's basically because of forking, for example, to build on your tool. Yeah. And to maintain this, you know, 
yeah, for sure. Also, we are open to you know patches to enable or to add support for for Debian packages, but right now we we heavily like relied on that that's RPM based. Uh, uh, distribution and also that you use this git in Fedora because we yeah. were trying to solve like our use case but but we are open to you know pull requests for sure cool. nowadays rebase helper is based or is targeted to the rpms and we would like to introduce debian uh, packaging system or something like that uh, but we need a pull request yeah. uh, also, also debian packages are like kind of made differently and it's not completely like uh, mappable from my point of view to, to RPMs or to some point, yeah. And, and they also already have, la last year we also gave presentation about Rebase Helper and there was one Debian user and he told us that they already have kind of like some tools, maybe not single tool, but more tools that in combination they do similar thing maybe, also oh, at least for the patches, I guess. So they may not be that interested it in this as we were. Yes, we were. I guess that we have uh, one minute left. Yeah. The one scarf left. Yeah. Okay. So. Thank you.